Hello everybody, Chris here. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about how to do easy video stabilization inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So the idea here is that I have a very shaky, unstable video clip. When we go ahead and hit play, you can see that the camera is bouncing all over the place to the left and the right uh, as the shot pans downwards and over the waterfall area. It just doesn't look very stable in general. So we can try to correct that in so it just doesn't look very stable in general. And we can try to correct that inside of Resolve 16 by going over to the inspector in the edit tab. There's also stabilization settings if you go to the color tab and then the tracker. But the easy way to do it, which is what we're focusing on this video, is in the inspector with the clip selected, you'll notice that there is stabilization down here. Now it's enabled by default, but that doesn't actually mean it's stabilizing anything by default. So if I double click on the stabilization section, you'll see that there's a button here that says stabilize. So nothing actually stabilizes until we hit the stabilize button. And we'll do that in just a second here. But first I wanna briefly talk about the different modes. So under mode, there is perspective, similarity, and translation. The simple way to understand it is that from top to bottom you have the most complicated algorithms for taking the most details into account when trying to stabilize your video. But when you try to use the perspective stabilizer, you might find that the end result has some issues like little video defects. So you can drop down to similarity if you have any issues. So if after switching to similarity, it still looks a bit janky, you can drop down to translation as well, which only allows stabilization on the X, Y axis making it less 3D and possibly giving you a better result in the end. So the general pattern though is going to be try perspective first. If that doesn't look good, try similarity. If that doesn't look good, try translation. Uh, putting that aside, we can look at the settings down here. So besides the mode, there's a few settings down here. The first is camera lock. So if you check camera lock, you'll notice that it disables these settings down here, cropping ratio smoothing and strength. With camera lock enabled, the stabilization is going to focus on eliminating camera movement from the shot in an effort to make it more of a locked shot with minimum movement, but it's not going to have any of the smoothing that you would have by default. So, so when you don't have camera lock enabled, it will still try to stabilize your shot in general, but it will also try to make the movement smoother based on whatever ratio you set here for smooth which will make it look like your frames more seamlessly move into each other, which in general will make the movements seem more smooth. So in order for DaVinci Resolve to do the smoothing, it's going to need to crop away part of the edges of your video because the original video file no longer is going to be a perfect square, but in order to make it look smooth, it'll actually be doing things like rotating and moving around uh, your original video file. So by cropping away those sides of the edges that would look really bad if you left them there, uh, that's kind of how it's able to get the smoothness. By trying to make the center look good and then the edges are just discarded. But to limit the amount that the stabilization cuts away, you have cropping ratio here. So the higher your cropping ratio is, the less of the edges it will really allow to cut away in the stabilization. So if keeping the majority of your shot is important, then keep your cropping ratio high. And then strength down here at the bottom is pretty obvious. The, the higher your strength is, the more that DaVinci Resolve will try to stabilize your video. Uh, that just defaults to full strength because generally if you want stabilization, it's important for your shot to look smooth. But, but if for some reason you only want to stabilize things a little bit, then you could always lower the strength down. Okay, and then lastly, the zoom box, you're usually going to want this checked on. Uh, what this will do is that when the stabilization is complete, DaVinci Resolve can zoom in on your shot automatically to get rid of the blinking edges that are created whenever you do the stabilization effect. So without that zoom, the edges would look bad and that's why you need to automatically zoom in a bit. So, on, so in most cases, you'll just leave this checked unless you want to manually do the zoom or for some reason you want to see the edges of the shot where you just get like little black lines. But I can't imagine why you would want that. So yeah, just leave zoom checked. So now we can start by going to perspective mode, stabilize. By the way, whenever you make changes to these bottom settings or the mode, you do need to hit the stabilize button so it can reanalyze your video and reapply the stabilization effect. So when you have a new mode selected, just go ahead and hit stabilize and it'll take a minute to analyze everything on your video clip, obviously depending on the length of the clip. So just give it a minute and then come back. Okay, so now that all the stabilization is complete on our video in perspective mode, we can go ahead and hit play and see if it looks good here. 
So you should be able to notice that obviously the shot is a lot less shaky now. And so far from what I can tell, there doesn't really seem to be any major issues with it. It might be playing back a little bit slow in your timeline just because it needs to render the stabilization effect. Um, but overall, that looks pretty good. So if everything looks good in perspective mode, there's really no reason to drop down to the other modes of similarity or translation. But if you do get any weird video defects or warping, then yeah, try the other modes. And that's pretty much all there is to doing stabilization. In most cases, this should give you the result you'd be looking for in your video without having to play too much around with the settings. If for some reason you want to have a little bit more control over things, you can go over to the color tab and mess around with the tracker here. But that's a bit beyond the scope of this video, which is just about doing video stabilization the easy way. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.